Hey guys, we're Mimal today. So in today's video, we'll be talking about the Springboks versus the British and Irish Lions for Game 2 of the 2021 Lions series. Of course, the Lions did win the first test out of the three, and they had a brilliant result, obviously, for them. You know, this does put them in, you know, advantage, you could say, towards this second game. And if they do win this second game, of course, they have won the series. So it's a, obviously a very important result, obviously, for them to get the, the win within this game. But I would actually say it's probably a more important, actually, for the Springboks. You know, it's a, really a must-win for the Springboks for this one, of course. Because if they don't win this, you know, like I said beforehand, the Lions do win. But if they do win it, then, you know, the third and final test actually becomes the decider. Which, as a neutral, that's what I want. And I'd say, as a Springbok fan, that's definitely what I want. So, I mean, yeah, I'd hope it goes to the third test. But you never know. The Lions are very strong. And they really proved that within that first game. So, it'll be definitely, a, you know... It'll be definitely a challenge, you could say, within this second test, for sure. Of course, this uh, game has been played within Cape Town Stadium once again. So, of course, the Springboks will have home advantage. We'll have to see if that comes into it, um, intuition, of course, within this game. But we'll have to wait and see. Of course, uh, you know, I'll go over the Springboks squad as well as the British and Irish Lions squad. And I'll tell you what I think about them. And, yeah, I'll give you my uh, prediction right afterwards. So, of course, starting with the Springboks, uh, here is the Springboks starting lineup. I'll run about with you guys, and yeah, I'll tell you what I think about it. So, of course, with the spin box, they have come with the likes of Steven Klitschkoff, as well as um, Imbo Nombe, as well as uh, Flans Malhoba, for, of course, for the rough front row, which for me, I'd say is probably the best front row they can obviously go with. Obviously, they started this front row within the second half, uh, as soon as the second half uh, started within the first game, which I thought was not the right decision. I think they should have given them at least 10 minutes before they actually came off the bench, but... At the same time, I'm happy to see, obviously, you know, the the actual starting, you know, front row, obviously, the start. So, happy to see that, of course, you know, with uh, Ox and Che. And I believe in Kanye, obviously, going back uh, back towards the bench. So, of course, with the locks, you do have the likes of uh, Etzebef as well as uh, Mostert, who, of course, uh, you know, stay their places within the uh, locking uh, lock spot, which I do believe they actually had a great game. So, I'm not really going to question them too much. I think Otojo was probably, you know, the man of the match, of course, within the first game. So... They're going to have to kind of disrupt him, I'd say, a bit more than what they did within that first game. But other than that, I was pretty impressed by both of them. I mean, with the uh, loose forward trio, of course, they had gone with the likes of Colisi at 6, who, of course, is the captain of the Springboks. At 7, they have gone with the likes of uh, Dutoit. And, of course, at number 8, we've gone with uh, Jasper Oasis. So, very excited to see how he does within this one. Obviously, he is replacing Quagga Smith, who I would say is a like-the-like like -the -like replacement, in my opinion. Obviously, for the way that they both play. But uh, we'll have to wait and see what happens there. Of course, with the back line, the Springboks have gone unchanged from the uh, first game, of course, against the Lions. You know, with uh, De Klerk at 9, with Andre Poller at 10. So, a good 9-10 combination there, to say the least. I mean, with their uh, center combination, they have stuck with the likes of Dale Lende as well as Locanio Am. So, very, uh, you know, very good combination, in my opinion. And I thought that was probably the biggest threat, I'd say, the Springboks really, you know, had against that... Uh, British and Irish Lions back line, I'd say it was within the center spot. They really, I'd say, you know, won that battle in my opinion. But, I mean, for the wingers, though, yeah, I've gone with the likes of uh, Matt Bibby, of course, with the 11 spots. And, as well, of course, with Chelsea and Kobe at 14. So, I wouldn't say those two had the brightest game, in my opinion. They just didn't really have much of the ball, so they couldn't really do much. But, you know, hopefully we'll see, obviously, more open play up in the, the second game. And, of course, with the last uh, player is uh, Willie LaRue, of course, with that 15 jersey. So, yeah, hopefully um, he has a better game, I'd say, within the first one. I mean, he had a good game overall, but there were some chances where he just couldn't really find open spaces. And also, I think he was one of the uh, the uh, unfortunate players that actually dropped the ball, which obviously led towards, uh, you know, a scrum. And, obviously, that led towards another penalty towards the British and Irish Lions. So, it's one of those which I think the Springboks definitely have to improve on. But, overall, um, yeah, pretty solid Springbok squad there. So, yeah, that's kind of about the uh, Springboks. Of course, we'll move on to the British and Irish Lions. So, of course, here is the Lions squad. I'll go over it right now. I'll tell you what I think about it. And then afterwards, of course, I will make my prediction for the game. So, of course, with the uh, British and Irish Lions, you do the likes of uh, Michael Villapola at one. Of course, with uh, Luke Kandeki at two. And Tag Furlon at number three. So, again, I said this is a very strong front row. Of course, um, they've actually put Michael Villapola, um, you know, the start for the first, uh, for the for the second game, of course, he was he made a massive impact, in my opinion, uh, within the uh, first game. I think he was probably the best impact player, I'd say, within the first game. I mean, he just was really good in actually controlling the scrum. And, yeah, hopefully you can do the same, obviously, um, yeah, with him starting now. Of course, he is replacing Roy Sunderland, so just, obviously, he'll be dropped towards the bench. The other than that, pretty strong front row and pretty, you know, I think it's pretty solid overall. But, of course, with the uh, lock pairing, you do the likes of uh, Mario Toji at four. And, of course, Alan Wynne jones at five, who, of course, is the captain of the Lions once again. This is probably the Lions' strongest area, in my opinion. I think they were just, they out, yeah, they really dominated that, you know, the lineouts and really set plays throughout the whole game against the Springboks. So hopefully we'll see that once again, obviously, for the Lions. You know, I think Otoje was just, yeah, he was my man of the match by, by far. Obviously, there's a lot of people saying Courtney Laws 
uh, you know, has, you know, maybe he, he deserved it as well. But I think Maritoche, in my opinion, just deserved it for the amount of penalties and obviously just how good he was within the breakdown. So, yeah, hopefully we'll see more of that within this game. Of course, for the Leafs forwards, you do have the likes of uh, Courtney Laws at six. You have, you do have uh, Tom Curry at seven and, of course, Jack Conning at eight. So they have gone with an unchanged uh, Leafs forward pack there, which I'm, I'm not surprised about, but I would have liked the seed uh, Falatao, in my opinion. I think Falatao is still my favorite number eight, I'd say, for the British Irish Lions have in their selection, but I, I guess they really just do like Jack Conan. So, I mean, props to him, obviously, he had a good game, so not really going to question that too much. I mean, with the uh, back row, of course, for the British Irish Lions, you do the likes of Connor Murray, of course, making his introduction uh, back into the side at number nine. You do the likes of Dan Bigger at 10, so that's a very important, you know, that he's, you know, he's actually starting because obviously he, he had to come off the, um, you know, come off the field pretty early, I'd say, for the British Irish Lions. There was suggestions that maybe Finn Russell or maybe Owen Farrell could maybe, maybe be within that 10 spot. But obviously, it's great to see that obviously Dan Barrow is continuing to be the number 10 uh, for the Lions. Of course, for the uh, centre pair in the angle, the likes of Henshaw at 12 and of Chris Harris at 13. So this is obviously the, uh, I'd say, the big addition towards this Lions, uh, Lions squad, of course, with Ellie Daly being put towards the bench. In my, if that's correct, yeah, Ellie Daly is on the bench. So, yeah, big moment for obviously for Chris Harris. You know, he had a brilliant Six Nations campaign and hopefully he'll be able to, you know, transform that form obviously into this game. Of course, for the wingers, they have gone the likes of Vatnam Merver again at 11 and of course, Anthony Watson at 14. So, again, Josh Adams is very unfortunate to miss out. I mean, I really do think Josh Adams deserves a, sh a shot, but I mean, Vatnam Merver, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest, did really contain uh, Justin Kobe. So, for that reason, I understand why they've gone with him ahead of Josh Adams. So, uh, it, it, it's a... I can understand the reasons why. And of course, with the number 15 spot, they have gone once again with Stuart Hogg, which is not really unsurprised. You know, it's not a surprise really because he is, in my opinion, Europe's uh, best, uh, you know, fullback to offer. So yeah, it's pretty pretty obvious that he, you know, he claims that 15 spot for the meantime. But yeah, that's kind of it with the, uh, the Lions squad. So if I had to really make a prediction towards this game, you know, if I had to be, you know, you know, as a neutral who I actually think will win this game, I mean, I think... Obviously, my heart is saying the Springboks uh, should win this game, but I have a funny feeling that actually the Lions will actually win game two. So I do believe, I mean, look, I, I personally wanted to go to game three by a long mile, but I just have a funny feeling that the, the Lions could do it. So for that reason, I'll say the Lions will win this game by, I'll say by two points. So I'll say they'll win this game, I'll say, I'll say 24 points to 22. Yeah, I'll say 24 points to 22 to the Lions is my final prediction for this game. I hope I'm wrong, but I think that's what's going to happen. Anyway, just uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Definitely like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.